Chapters 1 to 6 of Book 6, Volume 1 of Le Mort d'Arthur. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Adam Ringa. Le Mort d'Arthur, Volume 1, by Sir Thomas Mallory. Book 6, Chapters 1 to 6. Chapter 1. Soon after that King Arthur was come from Rome into England, then all the knights of the table round resorted unto the king, and made many jousts and tournaments, and some there were that were but knights, which increased so in arms and worship, that they passed all their fellows in prowess and noble deeds, and that was well proved on many. But in especial it was proved on Sir Lancelot du Lake, for in all tournaments and jousts and deeds of arms, both for life and death, he passed all other knights, and at no time he was never overcome, but if it were by treason or enchantment. So Sir Lancelot increased so marvellously in worship and in honour, therefore is he the first knight that the French book maketh mention of after King Arthur came from Rome. Wherefore, Queen Guinevere had him in great favour above all other knights, and in certain he loved the queen again above all other ladies and damsels of his life, and for her he did many deeds of arms, and saved her from the fire through his noble chivalry. Thus Sir Lancelot rested him long with play and game. And then he thought himself to prove himself in strange adventures. Then he bade his nephew, Sir Lionel, for to make him ready, for we too will seek adventures. So they mounted on their horses, armed at all rights, and rode into a deep forest, and so into a deep plain. And then the weather was hot about noon, and Sir Lancelot had great lust to sleep. Then Sir Lionel espied a great apple tree that stood by an hedge, and said, Brother, yonder is a fair shadow. There may we rest us and our horses. It is well said, fair brother, said Sir Lancelot. For this eight year I was not so sleepy as I am now. And so they there alighted, and tied their horses unto sundry trees. And so Sir Lancelot laid him down under an apple tree and his helm he laid under his head. And Sir Lionel waked while he slept. So Sir Lancelot was asleep passing fast. And in the meanwhile there came three knights riding, as fast fleeing as ever they might ride. And there followed them three but one knight. And when Sir Lionel saw him, him thought he saw never so great a knight, nor so well faring a man, neither so well apparelled unto all rights. So within a while this strong knight had overtaken one of these knights, and there he smote him to the cold earth that he lay still. And then he rode unto the second knight, and smote him so that man and horse fell down. And then straight to the third knight he rode, and smote him behind his horse's arse a spear length. And then he alighted down, and reined his horse on the bridle, and bound all the three knights fast with the reins of their own bridles. When Sir Lionel saw him do thus, he thought to assay him, and made him ready, and stilly and privily he took his horse, and thought not for to awake Sir Lancelot. And when he was mounted upon his horse, he overtook this strong knight, and bade him turn, and the other smote Sir Lionel so hard, that horse and man he bare to the earth, and so he alighted down and bound him fast, and threw him over thwart his own horse, and so he served them all four, and rode with them away to his own castle. And when he came there, he gart unarmed them, and beat them with thorns all naked, and after put them in a deep prison, where were many more knights, that made great dolor. CHAPTER Two. When Sir Ector de Maria wist that Sir Lancelot was passed out of the court to seek adventures, he was wroth with himself, and made him ready to seek Sir Lancelot. And as he had ridden long in a great forest, he met with a man was like a forester, Fair fellow, said Sir Ector, knowest thou in this country any adventures that be here nigh hand? Sir, said the forester, this country know I well, and hereby, within this mile, is a strong manor, and well dyked, and by that manor, on the left hand, there is a fair ford for horses to drink of, and over that ford there groweth a fair tree, and thereon hang many fair shields that wielded sometime good knights and at the hole of the tree hangeth a basin of copper and laden, and strike upon that basin with the butt of thy spear thrice, and soon after thou shalt hear new tidings, 
and else thou hast the fairest grace that many a year had ever night that passed through this forest. Gramercy, said Sir Ector, and departed and came to the tree, and saw many fair shields. And among them he saw his brother's shield, Sir Lionel, and many more that he knew that were his fellows of the round table, the which grieved his heart, and promised to revenge his brother. Then anon Sir Ector beat on the basin as he were wood, and then he gave his horse drink at the ford, and there came a knight behind him, and bade him come out of the water and make him ready. And Sir Ector anon turned him shortly, and in futur cast his spear, and smote the other knight a great buffet that his horse turned twice about. <laughs> this was well done, said the strong knight, and knightly thou hast stricken me. And therewith he rushed his horse on Sir Ector, and clayed him under his right arm, and bare him clean out of the saddle, and rode with him away into his own hall, and threw him down in midst of the floor. The name of this knight was Sir Turquin, and he said unto Sir Ector, For thou hast done this day more unto me than any knight did these twelve years, now will I grant thee thy life, so thou wilt be sworn to be my prisoner all thy life days. Nay, said Sir Ector, that will I never promise thee, but that I will do mine advantage. That me repenteth, said Sir Turquin, and then he gart to unarm him, and beat him with thorns all naked, and Sithen put him down in a deep dungeon, where he knew many of his fellows. But when Sir Ector saw Sir Lionel, then made he great sorrow. Alas, brother, said Sir Ector, where is my brother Sir Lancelot? Fair brother, I left him asleep when that I from him yode, under an apple tree, and what has become of him I cannot tell you. Alas, said the knights, but Sir Lancelot help us, we may never be delivered, for we know no knight that is able to match our master Turquin. Chapter 3 Now leave we these knights prisoners, and speak of Sir Lancelot du Lake that lieth under the apple tree sleeping. Even about the noon there came by him four queens of great estate, and, for the heat should not annoy them, there rode four knights about them, and bare a cloth of green silk on four spears betwixt them and the sun, and the queens rode on four white mules. Thus as they rode, they heard by them a great horse grimly neigh, then were they ware of a sleeping knight that lay all armed under an apple tree. And as these queens looked on his face, they knew it was Sir Lancelot. Then they began for to strive for that knight, every each one said that they would have him to her love, we shall not strive, said Sir Morgan le Fay, that was King Arthur's sister. I shall put an enchantment upon him that he shall not awaken six hours, and then I will lead him away unto my castle, and when he is surely within my hold, I shall take the enchantment from him, and then let him choose which of us he will have unto Paramore. So this enchantment was cast upon Sir Lancelot. And then they laid him upon his shield, and bare him so on horseback betwixt two knights, and brought him unto the castle chariot, and there they laid him in a chamber cold, and at night they sent unto him a fair damsel with his supper ready dight. By that the enchantment was passed, and when she came she saluted him, and asked him, What cheer? I cannot say, fair damsel, said Sir Lancelot, for I wot not how I am come into this castle, but it be by an enchantment. Sir, said she, ye must make good cheer, and if ye be such a knight as it is said ye be, I shall tell you more to morn by prime of the day. Gramercy, fair damsel, said Sir Lancelot, of your good will I require you. And so she departed. And there he lay all that night without comfort of anybody. And on the morn early came these four queens, passingly well beseen, all they bidding him good morn, and he them again. Sir knight, the four queens said, Thou must understand that thou art our prisoner, and we here know thee well thou art Sir Lancelot du Lake, King Ban's son, and because we understand your worthiness, that thou art the noblest knight living, and as we know well there can be no lady have thy love but one, and that is Queen Guinevere, and now thou shalt lose her for ever, and she thee, and therefore thee behoveth now to choose one of us four. I am the Queen Morgan le Fay, Queen of the land of Gore, and here is the Queen of North Gallus, and the Queen of Eastland, and the Queen of the Out Isles. 
Now choose one of us, which thou wilt have to thy paramour, for thou mayest not choose, or else in this prison to die. This is an hard case, said Sir Lancelot, that either I must die, or else choose one of you. Yet had I liefer to die in this prison with worship, than to have one of you to my paramour mogre my head. And therefore ye be answered, I will none of you, for ye be false enchantresses. And as for my lady Dame Guinevere, were I at my liberty as I was, I would prove it on you or on yours, that she is the truest lady unto her lord living. Well, said the queens, is that your answer, that ye will refuse us? Yea, on my life, said Sir Lancelot, refuse ye be of me. So they departed, and left him there alone, that made great sorrow. CHAPTER Four. Right so at the noon came the damsel unto him with his dinner, and asked him, What cheer? Truly, fair damsel, said Sir Launcelot, in my life days never so ill. Sir, she said, that me repenteth, but an ye will be ruled by me, I shall help you out of this distress, and ye shall have no shame nor villainy, so that she hold me a promise. Fair damsel, I will grant you, and sore I am of these queen's sorceresses afeard, for they have destroyed many a good knight. Sir, said she, that is sooth, and for the renown and bounty that they hear of you, they would have your love. And sir, they say, your name is Sir Lancelot du Lake, the flower of knights, and they be passing wroth with you that ye have refused them. But sir, an ye would promise me to help my father on Tuesday next coming, that hath made a tournament betwixt him and the knight of North Gallus. For the last Tuesday past my father lost the field through three knights of Arthur's court, and ye will be there on Tuesday next coming, and help my father, to morn or, or prime, by the grace of God, I shall deliver you clean. Fair maiden, said Sir Launcelot, tell me what is your father's name, and then shall I give you an answer. Sir Knight, she said, my father is King Bag Demagus, that was foul rebuked at the last tournament. I know your father well, said Sir Launcelot, for a noble king and a good knight, and by the faith of my body ye shall have my body ready to do your father and you service at that day. Sir, she said, gramercy, and to morn await ye be ready betimes, and I shall be she that shall deliver you, and take you your armor and your horse, shield and spear, and hereby within this ten mile is an abbey of white monks. There I pray you that ye me abide, and thither shall I bring my father unto you. All this shall be done, said Sir Launcelot, as I am true knight. And so she departed, and came on the morn early, and found him ready. Then she brought him out of the twelve locks, and brought him unto his armor. And when he was clean armed, she brought him until his own horse, and lightly he saddled him, and took a great spear in his hand, and so rode forth, and said, Fair damsel, I shall not fail you by the grace of God. And so he rode into a great forest all that day, and never could find no highway, and so the night fell upon him, and then he were in a slade of a pavilion of red sendal. By my faith, said Sir Launcelot, in that pavilion will I lodge all this night. And so there he alighted down, and tied his horse to the pavilion, and there he unarmed him, and there he found a bed, and laid him therein, and fell asleep sadly. CHAPTER Five. Then, within an hour, there came the knight to whom the pavilion ought, and he weened that his lemon had lain in that bed, and so he laid him down beside Sir Launcelot, and took him in his arms, and began to kiss him. And when Sir Launcelot felt a rough beard kissing him, he started out of the bed lightly, and the other knight after him, and either of them got their swords in their hands, and out of the pavilion door went the knight of the pavilion, and Sir Launcelot followed him, and there by a little slake Sir Launcelot wounded him sore, nigh unto the death. And then he yielded him unto Sir Launcelot, and so he granted him, so that he would tell him why he came into the bed. Sir, said the knight, the pavilion is mine own, and there this night I had assigned my lady to have slept with me, and now I am likely to die of this wound. 
That me repenteth, said Lancelot, of your hurt. But I was a dread of treason, for I was late beguiled. And therefore come on your way into your pavilion, and take your rest. And as I suppose I shall staunch your blood. And so they went both into the pavilion, and anon Sir Lancelot staunched his blood. Therewithal came the knight's lady, that was a passing fair lady, and when she espied that her lord Bellius was sore wounded, she cried out on Sir Lancelot, and made great dole out of measure. Peace, my lady and my love, said Bellius, for this knight is a good man, and a knight adventurous, and there he told her all the cause how he was wounded. And when that I yielded unto him, he left me goodly, and hath staunched my blood. Sir, said the lady, I require thee tell me what knight ye be, and what is your name. Fair lady, he said, my name is Sir Lancelot du Lake. So me thought ever by your speech, said the lady, for I have seen you after this, and I know you better than ye ween. But now an you would promise me of your courtesy for the harms that ye have done to me and my lord Bellius, that when he cometh unto Arthur's court for to cause him to be made knight of the round table, for he is a passing good man of arms, and a mighty lord of lands of many out isles. Fair lady, said Sir Lancelot, let him come unto the court the next high feast, and look that ye come with him, and I shall do my power, and ye prove you doughty of your hands, that ye shall have your desire. So thus within a while, as they thus talked, the night passed, and the day shone, and then Sir Lancelot armed him, and took his horse, and they taught him to the abbey, and thither he rode within the space of two hours. Chapter 6 And soon as Sir Lancelot came within the abbey yard, the daughter of King Bagdemagus heard a great horse go on the pavement. And she then arose, and yeed unto a window, and there she saw Sir Lancelot, and anon she made men fast to take his horse from him, and let lead him into a stable and himself was led into a fair chamber, and unarmed him, and the lady sent him a long gown, and anon she came herself. And then she made Lancelot passing good cheer, and she said he was the knight in the world was most welcome to her. Then in all haste she sent for her father Bagdemagus, that was within twelve mile of that abbey, and afore even he came, with a fair fellowship of knights with him. And when the king was alighted off his horse, he yode straight unto Sir Lancelot's chamber, and there he found his daughter. And then the king embraced Sir Lancelot in his arms, and either made other good cheer. Anon Sir Lancelot made his complaint unto the king how he was betrayed, and how his brother Sir Lionel was departed from him he wist not where, and how his daughter had delivered him out of prison. Therefore while I live I shall do her service and all her kindred. Then am I sure of your help, said the king, on Tuesday next coming. Yea, sir, said Sir Lancelot, I shall not fail you, for so I have promised my lady your daughter. But, sir, what knights be they of my lord Arthur's that were with the king of North Gallus? And the king said it was Sir Madder de Laporte, and Sir Mordred, and Sir Gahalantine, that all forfared my knights, for against them three I nor my knights might bear no strength. Sir, said Sir Lancelot, as I hear say that the tournament shall be here within this three mile of this abbey, ye shall send unto me three knights of yours, such as ye trust, and look that the three knights have all white shields, and I also, and no painter on the shields, and we four will come out of a little wood in midst of both parties, and we shall fall in the front of our enemies and grieve them that we may, and thus shall I not be known what knight I am. So they took their rest that night and this was on the Sunday. And so the king departed, and sent unto Sir Lancelot three knights with the four white shields. And on the Tuesday they lodged them in a little leaved wood, besides there the tournament should be. And there were scaffolds and holes, that lords and ladies might behold, and to give the prize. Then came into the field the king of North Gallus with eight score helms. And then the three knights of Arthur stood by themselves, then came into the field King Bagdemagus with fourscore of helms. And then they feutered their spears, and came together with a great dash. 
and there were slain of knights at the first recounter twelve of King Bagdemagus's party, and six of the King of North Gallus's party, and King Bagdemagus's party was far set aback. End of Book 6, Chapters 1 through 6. Recording by Adam Ringeth.